All right, I've gotten a lot of questions recently around how I create blog post content for Copy AI, specifically our SEO-based content. I'm gonna walk you through how I do that with the combination of chat and workflows. These are very different features. Chat being more closely to the chat tools you probably know, like ChatGPT, and then workflows being probably unlike anything you've seen or played with before. So I'm excited to get to show you how I create blog posts at scale, how we can do that while keeping quality high, and how I use chat specifically, and then where I use workflow specifically. So let's get started here with chat. I would use chat as like a brainstorming buddy. I don't use chat to write the blog post itself. That's something that I can't scale. That means that I still have to write the first draft of posts one at a time, which is okay, but it's not super efficient when I'm responsible for 40, 50, 60 posts a month, a combination of SEO plays, thought leadership, use case pages, things like that. So I needed something that I could do at scale to get our freelancers more content in bulk at the start of the month. So this is where I start. We're just gonna go through a fake version of the real process I use. So this is the prompt I have here in chat. I say, give me 10 blog post topics that would be interesting to go to market leaders struggling with implementing AI in their processes. Now I'm just telling it what kind of topics I'm looking for. I actually don't start here by keyword. And in the past, I used to start by keyword. I'd go into Ahrefs. I would look for the keywords that might have the highest volume or the best opportunities. But my problem with that is that meant that the keywords were driving my content, not the topics or ideas. And now I'm able to go back and I come up with 10 blog post topics knowing I'm not going to use all of them. In fact, I'm likely only gonna use, in my experience, I'm probably gonna use 30 to 50% of the first run. But this is the very first thing I would write. I tell it about the topics I want. So again, topics can include anything related to go-to-market strategy, including sales, marketing product, customer success, et cetera. For this month's list, focus on sales and marketing topics. So I'm telling it I, I need certain topics. I'll hit generate. I will let it come up with the topics that we want. And then I kind of look at whatever ones I think would be really interesting for me, for my audience. And this is where I'm using my human strategy and creativity in the loop. I will pull these over here. And, say, and I will go through these. As I'm looking through these, I'll say, okay, great. Can you give me 10 more? Just the topics. No need for discussion notes. I'm just getting a high level idea of what kinds of things I wanna talk about. So let's say I really like this idea. And again, I would go through this in much more detail if I were really doing it. This is just for an example. But if I were to have these titles here, I go through and I figure out which ones are the most interesting. And I'll show you what I can do from there. There we go, just clean this up a bit. Okay. So now I'm over here in my side editor, go through here, I say, great, how about 10 more? And I'm really only going for 10 total at this point, but I keep having it generate more and more. The reason is because I know that I need more than I'm actually going to use. So right now, if I have 20 here, 20 ideas, and now I have 30 ideas once I add these, but again, there we go got these 30 ideas. Now I go through myself and I figure out, okay, which ones do I actually want to use? So we have something like that, intent data. We don't really do intent data as much. We build the processes and use intent signal to send messages, but we don't actually capture the intent signals from the website. Future of content creation, that's good. Overcoming challenges, implementing your AIs. Okay, so I would go through these and again, let's just say I end up saying, okay, I want to use these 10. Again, just for this example, I haven't read any of these, but you get the idea. Now I copy and paste these and I say, okay, for each of these titles, brainstorm five keywords that might be good options to target. And now I take the topics that I really liked and I put them back in there and I have AI come up with some keywords for me. So chat's looking at these keywords here. It's gonna come up and now if you're doing your math correctly, I needed a total of 10 posts. So I generated 30 ideas. 
I then took those posts and I generated 50 keywords. Here's why. I can now go back through in my editor. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. I'm moving very fast just for demonstration purposes. I would take more time, obviously, if this was the real content strategy at Copy AI. But you get the idea. I've got the topics I like. Then I have it brainstorm the keywords that I think might work. Then I take these keywords and I verify them in my SEO tool. So check this out. Go over here. I go to Keywords Explorer and I enter all of them, all 50 of those keywords, and I hit search. And now I can start looking for the keywords that I'm going to actually want to write about. So AI content creation, AI lead generation, AI sales tools, customer support AI, customer experience AI. These are all tools, or excuse me, all keywords that currently have volume behind them. So I'm not just doing guesswork. And now I can go through and figure out, okay, which of these keywords seem like they would fit the topic that I was really excited about writing from my brainstorming session with chat. So that is how I get my keyword research done to make sure that I'm targeting the right types of contents. Again, starting with the ideas. I don't start with the keywords anymore. I find that very dry and kind of opportunistic. Whereas now I get to look at the ideas that are getting me excited, have AI chat help me brainstorm ideas. If I was doing this really for copy AI, I'd probably take more time there brainstorm some keyword ideas myself. I would then go through and verify, do we have content on any of these keywords? Are we gonna cannibalize any of these terms by writing too much content on that with the same term? Are we gonna rank too many posts for the same term? All of these are things that me as the human in the loop will do. However, now is the next step. So part two is where workflows come in. I have these workflows, this workflow built, where I now, let's say I take the keyword AI content creation, this is something I have built specifically for Copy AI, where all I need to do is enter the keyword. While it's processing, I can explain it's going to search Google for that keyword. It will extract the heading from the top three ranking articles. It will find related keywords that are needed to rank. It will build me a content brief and then a content outline, and then write that long form content. And then I have that tied to another workflow that sends the draft of the long form content to create some social media content for distribution after. Now I could make that in the same workflow, but I like to keep those separate. So if I make any tweaks to that social media one for voice, style, speaker, anything like that, it's all centralized in one place. Plus chaining the workflows together means I can do this instantly. So as soon as one of these runs, it kicks off the other workflow and they're practically part of the same. It's just separate. This one's for the blog, the other one's for social media, and it just helps me mentally keep that together. Now, while this is running, what I will do is head over to Surfer SEO, and I will create a content brief. Now, a lot of these tools exist for optimization. This is what we give our writers. So rather than giving them an outline or a brief, what I will end up doing is giving them a first draft that scores pretty well out of the box, and I will show you that. What we're gonna do is hit pause here just while this is generating, while the workflow is running, and while this is getting whipped up, we'll pause when we come back. In just a second, I will show you how I then take this and clean up that draft for our freelancers and give them some notes. Okay, so now we're in Surfer SEO, and we have this content editor brief created for AI content creation. If I go back to the workflow that I ran, I could pop open all of the content and I'll run through and find our long form content. Now, before I send it over there, I do need to quickly convert the markdown. It's the only really annoying step of the whole process. I use this markdown to html.com. It's very quick, pop it in there. And then I take that over to, to Surfer. And that's just for formatting issues. Now, right away, what I'm trying to do is get an idea for how it scores out of the box. So if I have just the basic pieces, including an H1 title with the keyword, and I use a placeholder for now, I'm at 60. And the average score is 83. I'm about 2,000 words, so it's about half what I need there, something a lot longer. I can modify the workflow to create longer output out of the gate. However, what I noticed right away is what I would probably need is some kind of an introduction here. But as I'm looking through the sections, I get an idea for what's, I'm just looking for an idea. Now it's the basic SEO best practice. I'm getting an idea for 
really, how does this need to get optimized? What notes do I need to tell the writer? So I am still a human in the loop to some extent here. At the editing part, I don't make myself a martyr. I don't spend a ton of time doing this. I hire really smart writers and they know what they're doing. So I've got the blog content because I've modified the workflow the way that I want. It's got a score of 61 already out of 100 where the average is 83. And I tell my writers, go through this and now make it human. And that's what they do. They check the internal links that get through, they check the pitch. And I tell them all the time, if you have to go back through and let's say for instance, didn't they wanted to really dig into the challenges of content creation methods. I tell them to use chat and convert this section into longer sections that are more detailed as long as it's actionable and not just going for fluff. So the challenges to traditional content creation modes, time and resource intensive, awesome. You know what, we might wanna take this and really flesh it out. So I would go back to chat and I would take this and say, help me if I could type, there we go. Help me flesh out this blog post section, making all the key tips actionable to the reader, struggling to produce SEO content at scale. And you know what, I'm gonna go back and actually highlight this whole section. And now what I can tell chat is convert all H bullet points into individual H3 headings. Take it there. Now it's gonna come back with an updated section. And I can take that go back when it's done and pop it right there into the brief. Now, again, I'm moving at lightning speed because I'm just trying to show you how the process works. If this were a real demonstration of how I do it for copy AI, I would spend more time here, obviously. I would really make sure that the writing is coming through. I would make sure that it sounds human. I would make sure that the information is actionable and it's not just fluff. But basically what I do is I whip this up into something that is is a pretty good first draft. It's really not bad. And then I hand it over to the writers. And the writer's job, our freelance writers, are to make sure that it's using the right keywords, to make sure that it's using the right language that we want, to make sure that it's telling the right narrative that we want. Not just that it's getting the information across, but it's getting the information across in the right order and structure that we want. So that it's talking about what did this concept look like before AI? Why was it a problem? What does this concept look like now with AI? How is it better? And that's the basic story we wanna tell throughout the whole blog post, especially through our SEO content. Our thought leadership content is a little bit different and our use case content is a little bit different. But if you're doing these standard SEO plays, workflows make this incredibly easy to do, really. All you have to do is go through, use chat, help you brainstorm some topics. Again, if you're going for 10, shoot to brainstorm 30, 40, 50 topics. You can always delete the ones you don't like. After you go through those topics, you can have chat brainstorm a bunch of keywords. And again, you can have your human input there as well. Then you take those keywords and you run it through your SEO tool. We use Ahrefs, but there's also SEMrush, Moz, about a billion other ones that you can use. You find the keywords that have actual volume and potential. You can then match those with the topics that you liked, then run those through the workflow have the first draft sent to your editing tool, create that draft to your writers. And now I can usually get about 20 of these types of drafts, 20 of these types of drafts that score 60 or higher to my writers in about four to five hours. I'm able to get those assets to them. So now at the start of the month, I just create a bunch of these and I send them to the writers. They know what they're doing again. I only hire writers that I know are really smart that I can trust. If I'm doing a bunch of editing on the back end, then I am hiring the wrong people. That's just how I believe content marketing gets bottlenecked very quickly. Hiring the wrong freelancers you don't trust and then feeling like you have to spend all these times of editing on the back end just because you feel like you have to. So if you have any questions, you can always find me on LinkedIn. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful. It was a lot of fun to make. So let me know if you have questions.